we are at the very end of March, which means it's time to go over all of the books we want to read for April. Don't worry, our March wrap up will be posted after this. We just needed a couple more days to read, so that will be coming out. But for now, we're going to go over our April TBR. Before we get into today's video, we do want to take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Book of the Month. If you guys have been around, you know how much we love Book of the Month. Their mission is to help readers discover new books that they love and to promote the work of emerging authors. Our blue box just got delivered, so we wanted to show you guys what we got for this month. The book I chose for April is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. Y'all know I absolutely love Abby Jimenez. So as soon as I saw this pick, I had to get it. I've loved every single Abby Jimenez book I've ever read, so I'm hoping this will be no different. For April, I decided to go with The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. You guys know how much we love Holly Jackson books. They're the perfect mystery thrillers. They're super twisty, and I can't wait to get into this one. Not only do they offer the best prices on new release hardcover fiction, but they also have free shipping and a loyalty rewards program, which we love. It's always really fun to see what new books they have every single month, and they always come in this super cute blue box. The bookmark says, Paige is just a number. <laughs> so cute. They also recently launched curated audiobooks, which members can choose, download, and listen to on the app. So now each month you have the option of a hardcover or an audiobook, which is really cool. We clearly love Book of the Month. They also did give us a discount code for you guys. So if you are interested in joining, just go to bookofthemonth.com and use the code PASTEL to get your first book for $5. We will leave all of that linked in the description. Thank you so much, Book of the Month, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the rest of our April TBR. I'm going to start with the one that I am most excited for, Fate Inked in Blood by Daniel L. Jensen. I don't know, just something about this plot seems crazy. It says, a shield maiden blessed by the gods battles to unite a nation under a power-hungry king while fighting her growing desire for his fiery son. I think that sounds really juicy. I think that sounds like a lot is going to happen in this book, and I'm so excited for it. I have a book here that I've been waiting to read for, it feels like years, so I'm really hoping that I'm going to love it. It's it is If We Were Villains by ML Rio. I know it's dark academia. I know there's a mystery involved and we're basically going to hear a story about something that's happened in the past. It just sounds really good though. It says, on the day Oliver Marks is released from jail, the man who put him there is waiting at the door. Detective Colburn wants to know the truth and after 10 years, Oliver is finally ready to tell it. This one's going to be so good. I'm interested to see if I'm going to like this author's writing style. This month I also want to read Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one has been on my shelf for a long time. It's actually Actually, the only book I have left unread from her on my shelf and I feel like I've just been saving it and every single book I've read by this author has just been fantastic. I know this one is actually her debut novel. I also think I don't ever really pick this one up because it does sound really sad. Yeah. This is the one where there's Elsie and Ben within weeks the two are head over heels in love and by May they've eloped and then nine days later Ben is riding his bike and he's killed on impact. He's whisked off to the hospital and there she must face Susan, the mother-in-law she has never met and who doesn't even know Elsie exists. So interweaving Elsie and Ben's charmed romance with Elsie and Susan's healing process, Forever Interrupted will remind you that there's more than one way to find a happy ending. So I'm sure it's going to be really sad. I'm sure it's going to make me cry, but I'm ready to have all my Taylor Jenkins read books read. Up next, I have a mystery thriller I'm really excited for, and it is Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. This is the one where a girl goes missing and we're following the detective, and it says that her family's safety is dependent on her framing the murder on someone else. So I just can't wait to see what is going to happen in this book. Wrong Place, Wrong Time was told backwards, so I can't wait to see what she did in this one. That book last year was one of my top mystery thrillers of the year, so I'm hoping this will be a top one for this year. I also want to read a mystery thriller this month, so I want to read The Only One Left by Bradley Sager. This was another one that you actually really loved and this is another author that I've loved every single mystery thriller that I've read from him. At 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope, stabbed her father with a knife, took her mother's happy life. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but she's the only one that's not dead. You know, a new housekeeper comes in and she's gonna get the full story on what happened and I can't wait. I'm sure it's gonna be crazy. Up next I have a book I was supposed to read in January of this year. I didn't get around to it but I knew I wanted to read it this month and it is All's Well by Mona Wad. I read Rouge by Mona Wad this year, absolutely adored it, so I can't wait to read this one. Her writing is always super unique and always feels like a fever dream, so I can't wait to see what this one's gonna entail. The back says All's Well is a fabulous novel about a woman at her breaking point and a formidable, piercingly funny indictment of our collective refusal to witness and believe female pain. Mona Wad's writing always has a bunch of different layers and I have a newfound love for literary fiction, so I can't wait to dive into this one, see what the plot is about. And 
this is the only cover I have this month that's kind of giving spring colors. These next two I'm really excited about because they were actually sent to me by Liz. So it's the Love Wager by Lynn Painter and If Only I Told Her by Laura Nolan. Two that I have been so excited to read. I've actually never read anything by Lynn Painter before but she just seems like a girly that I would love. Like I should have all of her books on my shelf and I'm hoping that what's gonna happen after I read this one. Haley Piper is turning over a new leaf. After belly crawling out of a hotel room she decides it's time to become a full-on adult. She gets a new apartment, a new haircut, and a new wardrobe but when she logs onto the dating app that she has determined will find her a new love she sees none other than Jack Marshall, the guy whose room she snuck out of. <laughs> after agreeing they are absolutely not interested in each other, Jack and Haley realize they're each other's perfect wing person and their searches for the one. They text about their dates, often scheduling them at the same restaurant so that if things don't go well the two of them can get tacos afterwards. You guys are such That's soulmates! <laughs> Discouraged by the lack of prospects, Jack and Haley make a wager to see who can find true love first but when they agree to be fake dates for a weekend wedding all bets are off as they pretend to be a couple, lines become blurred and each struggles to remember why the other was a bad idea to begin with. It sounds so cute. It sounds like the typical romance that I always love so I'm interested to see Lynn Painter's take on it. And then this one, If He Had Been With Me, was crazy. I read it last year and I'm very excited to finally get Finn's point of view and see it all go down again. So I have two short books up next. I know every month I want to read a classic and I'm working my way through the iconic ones. So I have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I'm gonna read this one with Bailey. Super thin book. I cannot wait to re-experience this story because I read it in high school but I don't think I gave it the attention or appreciation that it deserved. So I'm really looking forward to this one. The other one I have is Neil Gaiman's The Ocean at the End of the Lane. I have been wanting to read more Neil Gaiman because I loved Coraline and this one I had never heard of. Bailey gifted this one to me actually. It says returning to his childhood home to attend a funeral. A middle-aged man is drawn back to a place once alive with monsters and magic to a past where the impossible is all too frighteningly real. The Ocean at the End of the Lane is a groundbreaking triumph of storytelling as delicate as a butterfly's wings and as menacing as a knife in the dark. I cannot wait. Coraline was spooky so I don't know what to expect going into this one. I can't wait to work my way through all of his writing and then get all the covers that look like this one so they look pretty on my shelf. Next I have You Reach Sam by Dustin Tao. This one's been out for forever. I feel so left behind. I need to read it. The cover is giving spring but I know the story is not gonna give anything about spring. I know this one's really sad. I'm sure you guys have already read this one but it says 17 year old Julie Clark has her future all planned out move out of her small town with her boyfriend Sam, attend college in the city, spend a summer in Japan, but then Sam dies and everything changes. Oh my god! <laughs> like they just, but then Sam dies. Hey, I mean, I guess that's life, you know? That's horrible. Heartbroken Julie skips his funeral, throws out his belongings, and tries everything to forget him. But a message Sam left behind in her yearbook forces memories to return. Desperate to hear him one more time, Julie calls Sam's cell phone just to listen to his voicemail recording, and Sam picks up the phone. The connection is temporary, but hearing Sam's voice makes Julie fall for him all over again, and with each call, it becomes harder to let him go. What would you do if you had a second chance at goodbye? Girl, I'm actually gonna cry right now. I don't know if I'm gonna read this one now. I don't know, that's a lot. That is a lot. Back to back with the other two sad ones. I'm gonna have to like space them out very well but I have been wanting to finally read this one. It's ridiculous that I haven't read it yet so hopefully I can get to it in April. I too have a book that I cannot believe I haven't read yet. It's been such a popular one for years and I'm finally gonna read it. It is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This one's been popular since before we even got into reading and the wave is kind of over now but I still want to read it. It says between life and death there is a library. Up until now Nora's life has been full of misery and regret. She feels she has let everyone down, including herself. Things are about to change when she finds herself at the Midnight Library. She has the chance to make things right. Each book in the Midnight Library contains a different life, a possible world in which she's made different choices that played out in an infinite number of ways. With the help of an old friend, she can now undo every decision she regrets as she tries to work out her perfect life. Before times run out, she must answer the ultimate question, what is the best way to live? This plot just sounds really amazing. I want to know if the hype is real, because I feel like this one too is a hit or miss for people. It's one of those popular book talk books. We both have been wanting to read this one for a while so I can't wait to finally get into it. The last one I have for today is Annie Bots by Sierra Greer. We actually just talked about this one in a video and then Cora on Instagram posted a picture saying she was reading it because she watched our video and we asked if she liked it and she said she finished it in one sitting. It was incredible. It gave her Barbie vibes and a newfound hatred for men. So 
this will be my first literary fiction. I know it's about a robot who is created by this man in hopes that she would be like the perfect girlfriend for him. And then she ends up developing actual human feelings. So we'll see how that goes. The last two I grouped together because one, I have Club 22 by Tate James. This is the next book I have in the Hades series. I read book two last month. This is a dark romance reverse harem type of series and I'm loving it. So I can't wait to continue with it. <laughs> I'm for the third month in a row have read Rising by Pierce Brown on my TBR. I want to read this book. It's just I keep putting it off and then every month I run out of time to read it. So I'm gonna have to read this one closer to the beginning of the month so I can actually get it done because everyone says it's Hunger Games in space and that sounds amazing. So I don't know why I can't get myself to read it. I think it intimidates me a little bit but it will happen. I'm putting it on the TBR you guys. Excited for another sci-fi read though. Those were all of the books that we chose for ourselves. Now it's time to pick our blind book for the month. We are gonna be picking for each other like always. We have our paper numbers here so we're gonna choose for each other. I'm nervous for We mine. keep picking the same number. Let's I see. know. Six. Three. Hmm. It's your six. And your three. <laughs> oh mine's not too big. I'm so scared. Let's see. I already forgot what we put in here. Oh, oh, Lady Tan Circle by Lisa C. Another book of the month book. Wow, I do need to get through my book of the month books, but this is really good. I have been needing to work my way through my historical fiction books, so I'm really excited about this one. At the bottom it says Lady Tan Circle of Women is a captivating story of women helping other women. It is also a triumph reimagining of the life of a woman who was remarkable in the Ming Dynasty and would be considered remarkable today. This is exciting. I hope this is another historical fiction that I absolutely love. Okay, I'm nervous for mine. Oh, we brought these kind of good. Oh, okay. I'm excited for this one. Suicide Notes from Beautiful Girls by Lynn Wingarden. This is a YA contemporary that I had got in the beginning of my reading journey and I had been putting off and I definitely need to read it. It is a bit of a mystery. It says, they say Delilah burned herself to death in her stepfather's shed. They say it was suicide but June doesn't believe it. June and Delilah used to be best friends in a way that comes before everyone else. It was like being in love except more. Oh, that's so sad. cute. One night a year ago, everything changed. June, Delilah, and June's boyfriend, Ryan, were just having a little fun. Their good time got out of hand, and in the cold blue light of morning, June knew only this. Things would never be the same again. Now Delilah is dead, and June owes it to her friend to find out the truth, which is far more complicated than she ever could have imagined. I always love YA mystery thrillers, so I'm hoping this one will be no different. Something about it, the pace is faster, the twists are more twisty. <laughs> so I'm happy about this one. I can't wait to read it. So that is all of our books, you guys for our April TBR. We also have our book club book. If you're not already a part of our book club, the link to join is in the description. It's free. And the poll for what we're gonna read in April is currently up right now. That is pretty much it for today's video. Let us know if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them. And also let us know what you're excited to read in April. All of our social media links are in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you guys next time. Oh my God. <laughs> reading it for the first time. This is so crazy. At 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope. It wasn't me, Nalora said, but she's the only one that's not dead. Sing it. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. No, I know. It is crazy. I did not mean to pick like two, three sad ones, really. What's the third one? This one's gonna be sad. That one's gonna be sad. Oh, this is gonna be sad. Bro, hold on. Am I okay? <laughs> Help. <laughs> Similarly to that, I have a book so that I can't. To what? The fact oh. that you hold on. I, I really Not thought I was book. gonna make that. <laughs> Let me try yours. <laughs> just the opposite. They're just gonna stay there too. Oh my goodness.